What's up guys, Josh here, RK Motors longtime content guru and lifetime history buff. Today we're taking a look at this 1964 Plymouth Savoy Superstock Tribute. But first, before we take a look at this, today's trivia question. What was the first division to use the slogan muscle car in marketing? Comment down below and let us know the answer. So the idea behind a car like this tribute is back in the mid 60s, Superstock drag racing was really popular. So you go into a dealership and you could combine the lightest car you could find with the highest compression and biggest engine you could find. Uh, the Superstock from Plymouth was pretty much that embodied. Uh, it's kind of the same principle as today's Challenger Superstocks, the most powerful car you can buy in the lineup. Plymouth wasn't the only automaker doing this. Uh, you had Ford with their 427 and 428 Galaxies, Pontiac with their infamous 389 and 421 Super Duty program, and of course, the Chevrolet Bisquick, which was a 409 four-speed Chevrolet Biscayne. So a lot of folks in the hobby like to say that this was the first muscle car. We all know Pontiac perfected the muscle car with the GTO, but there is some credence to this being the first muscle car. Uh, the idea of combining a high compression V8 with a lightweight car goes back all the way back to say the 1949 Oldsmobile Rocket 88, or you know, the 300 cars from Chrysler. Studebaker Golden Hawk was another one. Uh, the uh, Rambler Rebel, uh, all those were pretty much muscle cars, even though they weren't technically called muscle cars. So the reason for a high performance car is twofold. You know, of course, first is racing. Uh, it, it's like the meme says, you know, ever since the second car was built, people have been racing cars. And the other is maybe illicit activities such as moonshining, you know, that's something we're pretty familiar here with North Carolina. So you can almost trace the progression of these high performance cars through the introductions of V8s in various ranges. So you had like 1949 Oldsmobile, 1951 Chrysler, 53 Buick, and 54 Ford, 55 Chevy and Pontiac. This particular Savoy, uh, according to its builder, it was a solid car when he started the restoration. So he, he did a multi-year rotisserie restoration and he was able to spend $30,000 on the fitment of the panels and the paint. The paint you're looking at, by the way, is a nice coat of Viper Red. It's much more vibrant than something that would have been out back in 1964. So a little history on the 426 Hemi. Uh, it's commonly called the elephant motor by those in the hobby because of its power and its size. Uh, hemispherical motor uh, research, I guess, began at Chrysler during World War II. They were looking for something to power tanks and planes. Eventually, they adapted it to their production motors and what makes it so special is the uh, airflow. The, the engine flows air really well. So 64, they introduced the 426, the most famous, uh, and it was basically a competition only engine. So it went to Daytona, Daytona 500, swept Daytona, was so good in NASCAR that it was banned for the 65 season. That caused Ford to start developing a single overhead gun version of their FE motor. You know, and they paraded around NASCAR a little bit, tried to get approval from NASCAR brass. In response, Chrysler, the rumor was, began developing a dual overhead cam version of the 426 and a Hemi version of the 440 with a six pack. Now, all that is rumor. You know, some people say it happened, some people say it didn't, but pretty cool nonetheless. The 426 was in production from 66 to 71 in streetcars, and then it took a little hiatus. In 1993, Mopar started making them as performance blocks once again. Uh, even today, in HRA, for example, their motor is based on the Hemi. So you have nitromethane, supercharged, aluminum block, funny cars, and, not, and top fuel cars that make 11,000 horsepower. Pretty impressive engine. Let's take a look under the hood. So this is a little bit bigger than what you might find in an actual Superstock. First of all, 64, first year of the 426 Hemi, uh, they were race only engines in 1964. This car is a 64. So it would be very hard to prove if you had a real 64 Superstock, you know, 426 Hemi. This is a 572 Hemi. Uh, these are very common um, aftermarket motors for these cars, kind of like Chevy 502s. Uh, the simple, it's a bigger bore and bigger stroke. The simple reason is more power. Uh, you have a cross ram intake, looks very cool. The, the big benefit of a cross ram intake on an engine like this is the long runners. So you have a lot of displacement and you need those runners to make a lot of mid and low range torque. 
Uh, that mid and low range torque works well, of course, with an automatic transmission and streetable gears, which this car has both. It's, it's geared more towards cruising on the street than racing at this point. Holley 650 carburetors, aluminum heads, and large diameter headers. Pretty simple setup, uh, 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque. So when we did the Apache video a few weeks ago, talked about the virtues of 60s design and how it was kind of one of the purest versions of the muscle car. Well, it certainly doesn't get much more pure than the inside of a Superstar. Now, as you can tell, just the bare essentials. Two seats, no back seat, uh, full telemetry, of course, so you can monitor all the engine's vitals. Winter sidewinder shifter, of course, that's a modern piece. It's much better for drivability as these cars would have originally been equipped with a four speed. Uh, also, another modern piece is the fire extinguisher. If you have a classic car or any kind of built car, always a great idea to have a fire extinguisher in it. Now that we're back inside, let's take a look under the car. So the first thing you're gonna notice is this is a lot nicer than any 64 Mopar would have been, any 64 car for that matter. Uh, base coat, clear coat floors. It's the big beneficiary of, uh, of a rotisserie restoration. You can really work the bottom of the car. Uh, old Chryslers are interesting in that they employ a torsion bar front suspension. So prior to cars like this, most torsion bar suspensions were found under more expensive cars. But also unique in this is that it's torsion bar front suspension, but also leaf spring rear suspension. Uh, leaf springs are considered antique at this point in the game. Back then, you know, they were, they were affordable technology. Uh, interesting about the Chrysler leaf springs is they were asymmetrical. You can see the axles actually move forward on the spring some. And when combined with the torsion bars, that provided a very stable car. So when you would accelerate, it would keep the car more level. When you would take turns, it would keep the car from leaning as much. The drivetrain is pretty common of an old Chrysler, an old Mopar. Get your A727 three-speed, very tough transmission. Dana 60 rear end. Pretty much all the performance Mopars have Dana 60s in them. Drivability for this car is improved um, by a quick ratio steering box. So it's still manual steering, but it's a quick ratio gearbox. And you have disc brakes at every corner. They're manual discs, but at least you do have discs. So it's it's a pretty good driving car. It's still gonna feel pretty traditional, but you know, it's gonna be a lot safer than what might have been, you know, drums, something like that. One thing I forgot to mention, 373 gears in the Dana 60. So that's a, a mild in comparison to some gears it's still you know pretty steep gear but not as bad uh, you know very streetable and massive exhaust system so you can see the electronic cutouts here if you want the full experience of kind of the open header sound nice crossover magna flow mufflers and dumps right before the rear axle this car at one point was a four-speed car uh, you know we have a full shop on premises so if you happen to buy it and you wanted to transfer it back to a four-speed car, we could certainly help you out with that. Yeah, overall, just a very nice restoration. So you'll hear the term mag wheels a lot with these cars, with old 60s racers. That came to be, you know, everybody ran steel wheels. That was kind of the uh, factory option. Well, then they started running magnesium wheels. So that's where the term mag wheel, wheel came from. It's kind of generalized at this point to represent pretty much any aftermarket uh, wheel. Uh, the problem with magnesium is it tends to crack, it tends to get brittle. So now you have stuff like this, which is actually alloy. It has the same look as the old mags, but it's alloy. And even today's newer performance cars run carbon fiber wheels, lightweight and strong. Uh, nice long studs for racing. These tires are cheater slicks. So you can look around the side here they were called cheater slicks because they had just enough tread to cheat DOT regulations. So you could, you know, they're still pretty good at the track and you could still run them on the street. They're also called pie crust slicks because of the cool pattern on the outside. Kind of reminds you of pie crust. Uh, these Firestones, pretty good on the strip, but more geared again towards street driving. That pretty much sums everything up. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, kind of in-depth look at this cool Savoy Superstock tribute. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and hit the comments. Let us know what you want to see, what you liked, what you didn't like. We're open to everything. Thanks.